We have this one and two more. Three more units. So not too bad. Three more. We've done four. In grade 10, there's seven units in total. Right? So sometimes in mathematics, there's a relationship between two things. When that happens, you can make an equation and you can make a graph. And you've seen this already in grade nine. Uh, and you know of these things already because you've probably had life experiences. But some of you have jobs and you get paid per hour. So there's a relationship between how many hours you work and how much you get paid. The more hours you work, the more that you get paid, right? There might be relations in other things. How much homework you do in math class and how well you do on the test. Maybe there's a relationship there. I didn't do any homework. I didn't do very well, right? I did all my homework. Probably going to do a little bit better. So this is what this unit is looking at. And we're looking at starting off with some of the definitions. So in your notes, uh, you have some spaces that you can fill in. And I can click on them. So for example, we start off with the definition of a relation. It is an association between the elements, which is a fancy word for the numbers in one set, to the elements. Again, same fancy word for numbers in another set. So here's an example. You could have a relation that's just words. What's the relationship? Well, an apple could be associated with red. It also could be associated with green. Are there other colors that apples could go with? Yellow, right? A really old apple, brown, maybe. So this just is an idea. You're making a connection between two things. Most of the ones we're going to be doing are going to be involving numbers. This isn't a unit where we just write words down, but it gives an example. Okay? Sometimes you get a relation in the form of an equation. In this case, hmm, p is equal to 2t plus 1. So can you see in this relationship, when t equals 3, what does p equal? Well, you plug in 3 for t. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 2. You would find out that p is 8. So we have a relationship. When one thing happens, something else happens. Different ways. Oh, I'm going too fast. There's a lot of things. There's boxes too. I could have just left it blank, but sometimes when there's boxes, you're like more aware that you'll spill something in. Yeah. But the problem with the box is sometimes like you can't fit everything in the box. So, yeah, a, a line would have been an okay idea because then you could write bigger or smaller. But I thought about going through and erasing all the boxes this morning and reprinting it out. Oh, no, not reprinting it, but before I print it. Oh. Because <clears throat> what you can do in Word is, like, obviously I have it all typed out, right? And so what I can do in Word is I can put the box over top, and then it tells you you need to write something in. Okay, is everybody ready? So, there are different ways that you can write a relation. One way is with just what's called a set of ordered pairs. These are coordinates. 
and you can graph coordinates. You have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So this is telling us when x is 3, y is 2. When x is 1, y is 4. When x is 0, y is 4. And when x is negative 2, y is 2. So it's explaining what the relationship is. Okay? Maybe, maybe this is a game. Right? So, like, sometimes when we're dealing with a list of things here, we don't know the context. So it's hard to say what the relation is. But I'll make up a context for this. Maybe we have a game that's a spinner. And on the spinner are the following numbers. 3, 2, sorry, 3, 1, 0, and negative 2. Right? And you've got a little dial on here. And you spin it around. And your dial is either going to land on the 1, the 3, the 0, or the 2. You pay $5 to play this game. Okay? If it lands on the three, I give you seven dollars. So the three would win seven dollars. If it lands on the one, I give you nine dollars. If it lands on the zero, I give you nine dollars. And if it lands on the two, I give you three dollars. So if you paid five dollars to play, how much would you actually make if it landed on the one? Four. You would make four dollars. How much money would you make if it landed on the three? Two dollars. So do you see how the relationship that I just invented is shown here? The X number, the first number, is where your spinner landed up. And the second number is how much money you make after playing the game. Would this be a good game to play? Would you play it? Yeah. Right? Well, you, you always win something, but only this one do you... Oh, no, this I, I made a mistake, didn't I? This is... If the 2 here says you win $2, so you actually would have a 7 here. Oh, this for sure you would play this game for $5, because you win money every single time. I'd be a very bad uh, inventor of games if I invented this one. Right? No, you would just say, no, you're a very good inventor. Another way that we can represent a relationship is a table of values. So in the table of values, it's saying that when the x is 10, y is 1. When x is 20, y is 2. When x is 30, y is 3. When x is 40, y is 4. And some relations have patterns. This one, I think, has a pattern. If I put 80 here, what do you think y would be? 80. So we can have a table of values. Because we can plot coordinates on a graph, you have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, you can show a relation as a graph as well. Sometimes we show an arrow diagram. In this relationship, the 1 goes to negative 1, the 2 goes to 3, the 3 goes to 5, the 4 goes to 8. Doesn't really look like this one has a pattern, just sort of random. And finally, we can have an equation.
So the thing is, when it's in one form, you try to think about what it would look like in the other form. So for example, if we go back to the first one, could you write this as a table? Okay? When x is 3, y is 2. When x is 1, y is 4. When x is 0, y is 4. When x is negative 2, y is 2. Could we do this as a graph? Well, if I had a graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I could plot 3, 2 as the following points. This is where 3, 2 would be. Where is 1, 4? Right up there. 0, 4, right there. And negative 2, 2, right there. So the graph for this one would just be four single points. Could I draw the arrow diagram for this one? 3, 1, 0, 4. Do you see that the arrow diagram is like basically... I mean, sometimes, see how the arrow diagram can have only four listed once? Can you have two arrows pointing to it? So it's a little bit different, but it's basically the same as a table of values. That is a good question. Because my brain was already thinking about that for what number should be there? Negative two. Danger of when you start thinking ahead. Then your brain. Why is there no two two? Gosh, because there is two two. Oh, we wouldn't need to write two two, would we? We could get away in the arrow diagram with pointing both of those to 2 and both of those to 4. So sometimes the table of values is nicer that it breaks things up. Sometimes the arrow diagram is nicer to see how many numbers are included in the y's, how many numbers are included in the x's. And then the equation isn't always easy to see. In fact, I'm going to say for this one that it isn't easy at all. I could make something that works, but it would not be an easy equation to figure out. If we go to the second one, can you see that you could write these as points? 10 comma 1. 20 comma 2, 30 comma 3, 40 comma 4. Could you, could you graph it? Yes, you could graph those points. Could you make an equation for this one? And in the equation, we like to write the equation with y equals and then something with x is on the other side. Is there a formula that helped you figure out what y was using what x? You take the x number and divide it by 10. There's your formula. There's your relation as an equation. So sometimes if you see a pattern and you're like, I always take the x value and divide it by 10, then all of a sudden you create an equation. And the equation is more powerful than just the points that you have. Okay. There's a graph. We don't have any scale given, but it kind of looks like, doesn't it look like I might have the point 3 comma 3? That I might have the point 2 comma 2, 1 comma 1. Does it look like, you can make a table of values of that. Could you write a whole bunch of points? And now that we've done that, could you come up with a formula? Is there a way to figure out what y was equal based on what x is? There's our formula. y is just equal to x in this one. And so these are all different ways of looking at relations. 
Okay? The one that we're mathematically moving towards the most are the table of values, graphs, and equations. Right? Math going forward. Okay? In grade 10, you will do a lot of equations that look like this. You are going to be able to, and you did these a little bit in grade 9, but if you had this equation, the question is, how how could you graph it? Well, we could take certain points, like I could plug in 0 for x. Here's my table. I plug in 0 for x, and I would get negative 4 for y. There's one point. I could plug in 1 for x and get negative 1 for y. There's another point. I could plug in 2 for x and get 2 for y. And what we're going to find out in grade 10 is we are going to study a lot of relations that end up forming straight lines. In fact, that's our whole next unit. That's like this one is just getting used to relations, and then we focus specifically on straight lines so that you can find out how to go directly from here to the line. And we're going to learn some shortcuts for that, like whenever a number is here is always where it crosses the y-axis. And we're going to figure out that whatever number is here always tells us, oh, we have to go up 3 over 1, go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. And those will be things that we're going to learn about lines. Is there a relationship between how tall a dog is and what kind of dog it is? Probably, right? You'd probably, if you imagine a German Shepherd in your head, you probably don't think it's only this tall, right? You have an idea of its height. You just say its name and then you think of its height. Some of these, you might be like, I've never heard of that dog, right? For me, I'd be like, How do you say that one? Malibu. Malibu? Malibu. I can't Malibu. picture that one. Malibu. 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 What does that look like? Uh, yeah. it looks like what, what movie was it in? Okay. Like so, who do we who do we show this? It's like a husky. Yeah. Okay. But lots more. Afghan hounds. Those are the ones with the long straight hair. Super tall, super skinny. Okay. This is the Queen's dog, Corgi. Oh, that, that was a sad, sad video. <laughs> you are sitting there watching at a funeral. Corgi. So, we could make a table of values of. Why don't they just call it a husky? They have super long hair. All right, are we ready for the next slide? No, wait, hang on. Oh, sorry. You were looking up dogs. I mean, this isn't hard to do, right? But it's just it's just showing it in a certain form. So this unit to start off with is just sort of like getting used to different ways of representing something, right? That you go from a list to make it a table of values. Enjoy the unit while it's easy, you say. Exactly. Just, I know it's handy, so definitely, yeah. 
Hey, well, this thing's getting harder. Definitely. That's how I will mostly I'm now scared. So. No days off. Keep I didn't know that. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Oh, three have So this is the table of values. Could you, for those of you that are done, could you show it as an arrow diagram? And as the arrow diagram, what would that be? There's our dog names. There's our weights. And so each form that you write it in has certain advantages and disadvantages. Okay? The table of values is nice because it's just everything is connected right across from each other. Whereas the arrow diagram sometimes gets a little bit more confusing because things are going left and right. Let me just zoom in a little bit as I see people trying to see what it says. A nice thing about the arrow diagram is, oh, golden retrievers and, and German shepherds are about the same height. You see that a little bit quicker in the arrow diagram than you would have in the table of values. So, are you noticing why these notes are a little bit longer? Yeah. Like, they just, some of these stuff. things take a lot of space to fill in. Okay, are we good? No, not yet. Sure, if you need to. Where's the calculator that you have? Because I'm still missing it. So I'm not going to use All right, here is a set of ordered pairs. This one you don't have to write down because I gave it to you, right? Yeah. But... No, 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 we could just... Oh. Oh, okay. I did a pretty good job of coloring. I went all over the lines a little bit. I know. I'm going to go on record and say it's wrong. It sucks. I'm just like fucking with my pronunciation. <laughs> So what's the advantage of a bar graph here? You can really sort of get a sense of how much taller the Afghan hound is versus the Chihuahua. It really shows up as a visual in a graph. So graphs are helpful because they provide us with a visual that can sometimes tell us more information quickly than just a list of data points.
What's the tallest dog? Uh, Captain James Hill? Yes. Yes. I'm a lion. Lion Smith? No, what was the Great Dane? Oh, yeah. oh, those are pretty. Those are pretty tall. Not tall as tall. It sounds like a massive bear like mm. dog. Massive bear like dog. You know what I'm talking about? I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Not, not the St. Bernard, but the big, the, the black one. Oh, I don't like St. Bernard. It's a Newfoundland. The Newfoundland one. Newfoundland one, yes. We don't follow it. This is you. We do. between two things. So here, we've got communities and territories. What is the relationship in words? Well, oh, I gotta zoom in. Because I'm not looking at this spot. Here we go. Can you zoom back in? Does that make sense? Every every community that exists in Canada is going to be in either a province or a territory. So there's a relationship there. Right? What's the relationship when you think Winnipeg, you think? Manitoba. Gangs. <laughs> Could you write this as an ordered pair and would it be annoying? Yes. Good. No, just write out one. Do you think if you wrote out one, you could do the other one? No. Probably not. They were a new paper. I could pick one of those. I think the one that sounds the most fun to go to is Nanisvizik Nanunivik Blue. <laughs> no, 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 no. I That's like a tongue twister. Can you say that fast five times in a row? No, 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 <laughs> yeah, wanna, should we just skip C? Yeah. Okay. No, no, let's do it. We can't, we can't, we can't be related. Congratulations, you've written you, it out you on feel, my You feel like you could do it, right? Jared, I got left behind. Understand go back to the process. Wait. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Well, you, you, you don't need to, do you really need to write them down? Yeah. No. Is it is it that, isn't it that easy that you don't think you need to write them down? Repetition. Now what about the practice? Okay. All right. Fair enough. Repetition. Okay. And you want to fail your 
So I think this is a good tongue twister. You want some good tongue twisters? Try this one. <coughs> oh, Mr. Sock. Okay, say that five times, John. <laughs> You're good. Okay. I've been practicing that my whole life. That's, that's the only thing he's been doing. Okay. He's practicing. That's why he's been failing math. <laughs> There's another one for you, Aiden. What happens with the first one? Do people start saying New York? Unique, New York? You said New York. I got it to three, three times. Okay. You want that? You want you want to write them down? No, let's get it. Let's go to another one. Okay. This one's not so bad. The graph is given. Can you fill in the numbers? Great question. No, I cannot. Yes, I should have I should have kept the words there. I'm sorry. That would have been smart of me. Uh oh, and there's a spelling mistake. How's the difficulty so far of this unit? Not too bad? Just a lot of writing time. Why can't we go back to the old format of the other units? Honestly, let's go back to trigonometry. Go back to trigonometry. Yeah, trigonometry. Wouldn't they like how many hours can you do that? Did you ever remember that? No. Once you get it down, it's easy. That yeah, was, that was yeah, a, you waste your time. That was a rough lunch. I asked him like a thousand questions. I felt really bad. You just gotta get it down. All right. What did you get? 0. 0.75 for that one? Dude, oh, I haven't even written the names yet. Oh, 0. 0.5. That kind of looks like Jill. 0. 0.5. I'm just going with 0.5. Uh, no, 0.5 is that way. It looks like it's higher. I'm with 0.75, yeah. 45 minutes, I like that. But here it has H for hours. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Let's go. Are we ready? I can click. Oh, wrong one. I went the wrong way. Here we go. You want to skip this one? Arrow diagrams suck. All right. Okay, we're going to end our first video here. Oh, well, first of all, I'll show you the homework. Oh, it's on the bottom. Okay.